All right, welcome officially to grade 11 pre-calculus. This is our first section. You're noticing that we're starting at 3.1. That corresponds to the section in your textbook. Uh, I'm going to be flipping between uh, 3.1 and or three chapter 3 and chapter 4 because chapter 3 is all about solving quadratics and chapter 4 is all about graphing them and uh, I think they go better uh, together. I also want to do a shout out, did I say that right? I hope so, uh, to my dear sweet friend Amanda Conrad. She is the one that has provided me with all of these skeletal notes uh, that you see in my newer videos and she teaches at Windsor Park. She's incredible. Um, I love her a whole ton and uh, yeah, this is her hard work that I'm literally writing all over and uh, talking about. So thank you so much, Miss Conrad. All right, so factor the following quadratic expressions. We're going to do the exact same thing as we did uh, in the review, only this is kind of upping the ante just a wee bit. Uh, so first things first, remember we always want to see if we can factor out that greatest common factor, and then we're going to hopefully get simple. Um, and if not simple, it'll be complex, but we can do it. Or it might be a difference of squares. Now, we know for certain it's not a difference of squares because it's a trinomial, but first let's factor out a greatest common factor. In this one, it's going to be two or dose. Two, x squared minus x minus 6. So we need to come up with two numbers that multiply out to negative 6 and add up to negative 1. Those two numbers will be, get it all set up here, they're going to be 2 and they're going to be 3. And since x is negative, we're going to put the negative to the 3 and we're going to do positive 2. Because 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Boom! What about this one? We have decimals. We can't multiply each by 10 because, yeah, that would get rid of the decimals. But you ha in order to multiply something by 10, you have to have something on the other side to balance. Because this is an expression, it's pretty one-sided. But we can do, uh, what we can do is we can factor out a 0 0.1. So if I factor out a 0 0.1, you got to think about it as if I multiply 0 0.1 by something, I need to get back to 1x squared. So I'm going to say it's going to be 10x squared. Because when I do my little check, 0 0.1 times 10x squared is x squared. Good. What happens with this one? Plus uh, 14 because I'm multiplying it by 10x. Because if I go 0 0.1 times 14, ah, that is 1.4x. Very good. Same thing with this one. I can say that's going to be minus 12. What we notice here is these are all even. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out an additional 2. So 0 0.1. Then I'm going to open up these square brackets. And I'm going to say 2 times 5x squared plus 7x minus 6. Whoop, whoop. Now I'm using two different kinds of brackets because they kind of keep it separate. What I can do now is I can say, okay, 0 0.1 times 2 is 0 0.2. Okay, 5x squared plus 7x minus 6. So in order to factor this one properly, I need to have two numbers that multiply out to negative 30 and they add to positive 7. So let's see what we got here. 30. We have 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10, ding, 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 because if I have negative 3 and positive 10, that gets me to my positive 7, and negative 3 times positive 10 is indeed negative 30. So since we have a complex one here, it's not simple, we need to, um, uh, 0 0.2, we need to uh, tease out this middle term here. 
So that is 5x squared minus 3x plus 10x minus 6. So now I'm going to 0 0.2 square bracket again. I can take out an x from both of these first terms. So x times 5x minus 3 and plus, and I can factor out a 2 from here. So 2 times 5x minus 3. And now 0 0.2 times x plus 2 times 5x minus 3. And done. So that one took a little bit longer. There are lots of uh, fancy footwork steps, but you can kind of see why you need to be super solid in factoring uh, before you can move on to this step. All right. So what about these two? These next two have fractions. Yuck! Slash yay! We love fractions in pre-calculus. So just like in this question we factored out a decimal, what we're going to factor out here is a fraction. So I'm going to say I'm going to factor out a one quarter. So when I divide one quarter x squared divided by one quarter, I am going to just get my x squared. If I say, okay, and this one's going to be minus, x divided by one quarter is going to be 4x. Another way that we can think about it is if I go 1 quarter times negative 4x, I get back to my negative x. This one right here, negative 3 divided by 1 quarter is going to be negative 12. Boom. Now this one we're kind of happy about because it's a simple, um, it's simple because a or the coefficient in front of the x squared is 1. So I can say, all right, so one quarter, open up those two brackets, x and an x, and my numbers here, it needs to multiply out to negative 12, has to add up to negative 4. It's not going to be 3 and 4, but it's going to be 2 and 6. But, so the number of bits are going to be 2 and 6, but I'm going to make sure that the negative goes to the 6 and the positive goes to the 2. Done. Now this one, I'm going to factor out, you guessed it, a one-half. So here I am x squared minus a, oh, one divided by, or like x divided by one-half is going to be 2x. Four divided by half, okay, four divided into half, so you have four O Henry bars, and you divide them all into half. That means that you have eight partial O Henry bars. So this is going to be negative eight. So two numbers that multiply out to negative eight and uh, add up to negative two. Open up those brackets. X and an X. We're going to have four, and we're going to have a two, and we know that the negative goes to the four because four plus 2 is negative 2. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Boom. Done.